Are you still worried about the transmission of the new variants? I mean, come on, the UK variant has spread to at least 33 states here in the U.S. Today, I want to tell you how you can protect yourself from these new variants and the old strain. In December of 2020, leaders from the CDC had predicted that the new strand would become dominant by March of 2021. Here is the map of where we are today with the new strands. As you can see, it's not just one new strand. There are several. Today, I will tell you four things that we all can do in order to keep these new strands from becoming dominant. Be sure to stick around until the end where you'll hear an expert tell us how safe is air travel. Let's get to it. So today I'm going to give you four things you can do to protect yourself against these new variants. Now we already know if once you get vaccinated that you possibly could still transmit the virus. So that means even though we vaccinate 70 to 80 percent of the population and we get this herd immunity, people could possibly still spread COVID-19. These Four things could possibly protect you from getting COVID-19. Two of them might seem obvious, and then two of them you may not even heard about. Now, the first thing you want to do in order to decrease your chances of getting COVID-19 is to make sure your vitamin D3 level is adequate. Now, I know I've been beating this dead horse about vitamin D3, but studies have been done We have good studies to support that vitamin D3 is our key to protecting ourselves from severe COVID-19. That means preventing hospitalization and preventing severe symptoms of COVID-19 if you would come down with the virus. So an adequate vitamin D level we know is not 30. (laughs) And we know it's closer to 80. So check with your doctor to see what you can do, how much vitamin D you would need in order to get your level sufficient so you won't be deficient and put yourself at risk and your family at risk for COVID-19. Now, the second thing that you can do is double mask. Double masking can decrease your chances of getting severe symptoms from COVID-19. It can give you up to 90% protection if you wear the mask correctly. So double mask, because it's all about decreasing the viral load, and that is the amount of virus that's getting into your system. Anytime you can decrease the amount of virus getting into your system, it will protect you from having severe symptoms of COVID-19. The third thing you want to do to protect yourself, it's to goggle your throat and rinse your mouth with mouthwash. And if you don't want to use mouthwash, you can use just plain water. A study, a small study conducted in Brazil has shown that mouthwash, rinsing your mouth and goggling your throat with mouthwash several times a day could decrease the viral load of COVID-19 in your mouth and throat and therefore make it less likely for you to come down with the virus. So I would suggest whenever you go out, when you come back in to your house, just go straight to the bathroom and rinse your mouth and goggle your throat. And then just do it again before you go to bed at night. Now, the fourth thing you can do to reduce your chances of having severe symptoms from COVID-19 is to ventilate your home, work, or office. Now, I'm going to let you hear the expert on this topic. He is Dr. Joseph Allen, director of the Healthy Buildings Program, and he was interviewed by the Harvard T.H. Chain School of Public Health to talk about ventilation, and COVID-19. Here he is. Airborne transmission is happening. So first, we have to recognize the modes of transmission before it makes before it makes sense as to why we're trying to do things like open up our windows. 
So we know close contact matters for transmission. Uh, airborne transmission matters. We can talk about how we know that and why. There's a little bit of contribution from fomite or contaminated services, but not much. But so this airborne transmission is happening. And that means we talk about airborne, we're talking about far field airborne transmission. That means transmission with indoors, within the same room, beyond six feet. And so as we talk or uh, you know, breathe, sing, we're emitting these particles that will actually stay aloft for 30 minutes, an hour or more, until they're removed through one of two ways. They're diluted out of the air through ventilation or they're cleaned out of the air through filtration. So this is why we have some of these controls in buildings that I was writing about and have been writing about for a long time, which is in this order. You want to increase the amount of fresh air coming into your school, home, or office. Two, put in better filters on the recirculated air, specifically a MERV 13 filter or better. And three, you can supplement that with the use of portable air cleaners with a HEPA filter. Restaurants, so it's been all over social media and the news this week. People at a restaurant uh, transmitted clear transmission beyond this magical six foot buffer. But if you look at all of the high profile case studies that I think many people be familiar with now, outbreak at a choir practice, on a cruise ship, at a salon, ice hockey, on a school bus, it doesn't really matter the where it was, it's the underlying factors and they're actually all the same. It's time indoors, no masks, and low to no ventilation. So this latest outbreak is exactly that. No masks, they were in a restaurant. Uh, there was low to no ventilation, just recirculated air with no filtration. And so it's really not surprising anymore when we see transmission happening indoors when those conditions are present. Now, really interesting, we don't have a case study, to my knowledge, where those controls have been in place. Right? We don't have a case where it says people were in some place indoors wearing masks with good ventilation and we saw an outbreak. We just haven't seen it. So we know, we know this is a major way this virus is spread. And importantly, we also know what to do about it. So what are you going to do about ventilating your home, work, or school? Here are some things to consider. Make sure your windows are up at least an inch. Now, it's been some cold days and letting cool air in. It's not really something that feels too good, but trust me, ventilating your house, it's a good idea to decrease any high levels of the virus that may be circulating in your house, especially if you have other people coming in and out, even with masks on. Ventilating your office space is another good thing. Open the door and ventilate your area. But also, I would encourage you to buy a HEPA filter that you can keep on at all times, and it could decrease the amount of particles in your area. Now I'm going to let you know the safety of air travel. Let's listen again to Dr. Allen, and he will tell us all about this. Yeah, this is, this is going to surprise people, and I wrote about this in, uh, in May, uh, that you don't get sick when you're on an airplane, really. Um, and that's surprising because people say, well, when I travel, I know I get sick. But uh, let's take away the airplane cabin environment versus what you mentioned, the whole travel experience. And it gets down to these fundamentals again, the environmental control system. So on an airplane, you get uh, a 50-50 mix of outdoor air and recirculated air. So you get a high number of air changes per hour, 10 to 20 air changes per hour of coming in. All of the air recirculated on an airplane goes through a HEPA filter, which captures almost 100% of the particles that we're interested in. And then you have, you know, um, you have the air being delivered at each seat. So for all these reasons, we don't see, you know, it can happen. You can transmit this case, uh, this virus anywhere, but we don't see airplanes being places where we're seeing a lot of transmission. And in 2013, I wrote uh, with others a report for the National Academies on infectious disease transmission in airports on airplanes. And we had the same conclusion that this is, and based on decades of data, that airplanes are not places where people are getting sick. Now, just quickly, there are things that need to be fixed. In particular, we called this out in 2013, and I don't know if it's happening. Airplanes, when they're at the gate, often don't have their ventilation systems running. So that time when you're boarding, you know, I showed the CO2 concentration to start 1,700 parts per million. We found over 2,000 parts per million on many airplanes during boarding. 
because they're not running their ventilation. So, so that should be under a thousand parts per million if you're getting enough air. So at 2000 parts per million, that's telling you it's very underventilated. And so this is something, you know, airplanes and airports need to manage the, the queues in security. The restaurants and airports are a concern. Uh, during the jetway, when it's tight and crowded, very little ventilation. And on the airplane, if the systems aren't running during boarding. So now you know what everybody ought to know in order to keep the new variants from becoming dominant. Be sufficient in vitamin D. Double mask. Ventilate. And goggle and rinse your mouth. Do this daily, even after you get your vaccine, and we can see our way out of this thing real soon. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned to Hypertension Resistant to Treatment, where you'll learn more about trending topics and what everybody ought to know about hypertension. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.